Yeah, I'll say the same thing to my students with a split or these sort of advanced yoga poses. I'll say unless unless you're planning to try out for Cirque du Soleil, in which case you're going to need a lot of rehab anyways, <laughs> there's no purpose in these poses. And I know when I was 20, I had both feet behind my head and I was in a dysfunctional relationship and addicted to sugar and very unhappy. There was zero relationship <laughs> between doing weird things with my body um, and my sense of uh, satisfaction or happiness or groundedness. Yeah, and I think what happens is people who are naturally flexible genetically, uh, like you or me, um, we kind of come to it like, well, I'm doing this thing that everyone says is advanced, and I feel nothing. Yes, um, I've been doing this more. since I was three. Yeah, so mm -hmm. so how can you keep upping the ante? And then the folks who uh, aren't genetically hypermobile um, work for it and work for it and work for it and then they finally get it and then they realize that they're hurting everywhere yeah. because there's nothing functional about having a range of motion that you have no strength in exactly a passive range of motion exactly. so if we can um, sort of educate people from the start uh, about mm -hmm. you know what are you doing this for and why are you doing it yeah. um, and to get really you know just kind of real about yeah about the why yeah <laughs> yeah there's this interesting assumption that the more flexible you are the more fill in the blank I don't know what right. it is and I, I love to break that like why would it be important to get into a split why would you want to be able to touch your toes and it's this thing that's infused in I know it was in my training right. that it was like somehow more spiritual or you were more you know free if you had this right. hypermobility and I was that girl in the front of the class in splits and the teachers would come and push my chest to the floor and I felt like oh I must be good at this you know and I got a lot of positive feedback and then I spent years you know rehabbing all those injuries yeah yeah I mean I come from a background as in a fashion designer and so I kind of see the flexibility thing especially for women from a feminist perspective yeah. because you know I remember in college my English 101 English Lit 101 teacher had us bring magazines into class mm -hmm. and flip through and um, look at all the ads and most of the ads were like women lying on their back in high heels that like barely any clothes on usually uh -huh. like a bikini with like one leg and then like a really hot dude like with their Oh my God, like foot on top. Like yeah. Disturbing. Um, but you know, people respond in their brains um, to large shapes. Um, mm -hmm. People are very disembodied, I think, and mm -hmm. so they can only sense their arms and legs, and so they feel like they need to move their arms and legs in these like big giant mm -hmm. ways. Um, uh, and so that kind of movement just becomes, I guess, more sexy, uh -huh. and it's also just more in our cultural. Um, uh, you know, just like in our culture. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I always say I feel like yoga is infected by the larger paradigm oh. of fashion and fitness of, yes. you know, fat phobia and ableism and whiteness and all the things yeah. that get normalized in yoga. Right. And that's, and, and that flexibility. And, you know, I think about too, like, who were the original yogis? These guys who rejected their bodies <laughs> and were going to do all these weird things with their bodies to show that the body is disgusting. Right. And that's not what we're teaching. Right. We're not saying, well, I can hold my arm up for six months and have it calcify here. <laughs> so it's sort of ironic, you know? Yeah, um, yeah, no, it, it absolutely is. And um, yeah, I think the, the visual imagery of, um, you know, women that don't have a lot of clothes on in yeah. shapes that are, you know, <laughs> right? It's like, why was the Kama Sutra popular, you know? Or, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's uh, especially when you think of maybe like, large, um, you know, just magazine companies, mm -hmm. Condé mm -hmm. Nast or whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Sorry, I probably shouldn't be going here, but <laughs> it's like, you know, it's true. It's true. It's I mean, I yeah. Condé Nast, you know, like, I, I mean, that's just kind of what oh, it's yeah. about. It's like, that's yeah. what's going to sell. Yeah. Thing. Well, it's aspirational marketing, exactly. right? And yes. that we are sold a story that if we look a particular way, right. we're going to feel a particular way. And that was all, there's a history to that. I yeah. mean, Freud's um, nephew was brought in to help advertisers link emotion to buying things. And yes. same in the yoga world. And Instagram, people say, oh, Instagram's so horrible. And I'm like, really? Because Instagram is just what 
every single magazine I looked at from, you know, age whatever, yeah. five to, you know, 25 was. It's just yeah. that people don't look at magazines anymore, but yeah. it's the same thing. Yeah. It's no My difference. Instagram is amazing because I don't subscribe to any of those people. <laughs> right. So I have I all the activists, yeah. I have the bigger bodied yogis, I have the people pushing against it. And so right. I often tell people the first way to detox from the messaging about what you're told about your body is detox from the images. Absolutely. Do not look at fashion magazines. Yeah. Do not look at, you know, this skinny white girl on a rock with her feet behind right. her head. Um, which is fine if that's what she wants to do, right. but um, that really feeds a pressure. And in our culture of performance, I mean, we live yes. in a performance culture. Yes. And yes. it's really, it's harmful. And I think it's violent to our bodies yeah. to be selling some of this stuff. Yeah, and I think, I mean, for me as a former gymnast um, and uh, like even, you know, competitive cheerleading. So we mm -hmm. would go for national competition. You know, mm -hmm. I was the one they'd throw up to the top of the pyramid. Yeah. You know, we did all of our like backflips and tumbling things. It was a performance, just like yeah. dance is a performance, just yeah. like Cirque du Soleil is a performance. So when I came to yoga, I was like, oh wow, this is really cool. Like it's all the stuff I did as a kid that I can't do anymore, but it's like a little toned down and it helps me connect to my my you know <laughs> my sort of inner feelings in a way that I often want to maybe bypass yeah and so if if that you know was the starting point for for me and for you and for yeah. Julian um, that's kind of why we're all here it's like how can we progress from that yes. Um, yes and how can we have both how can we have a practice that is about the mind-body connection yes. and is structurally sound right that's